So in the previous video, we have discussed about the bubble sort algorithm. Now let us discuss about the selection sort algorithm. Okay. So <coughs> let us see what is the selection sort. So assume you are having this data. Data is four, five, one, zero, two, and seven. Okay. So this is your array. So in this data, and these are the next locations: zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So what is the selection sort? In selection sort, what you are going to do is, in this complete data, initially you are going to find what is the maximum element, and then you are going to put that maximum element to the last location. Okay. And the next time, you are going to find the maximum element in zero to four, four, uh, this array from zero to four, and then you are going to put the maximum element in the last location okay so how it is happening so assume assume we are searching on this and we are applying linear search on this and then we are trying to find out what is the maximum data okay so here how to find the maximum data here the maximum data is 7 and which is already at present in the last location okay now initially we have searched from this much array now we have to search on this much array because we have already given this maximum data to its correct position okay now search what is the maximum data from 0 to 4th index location so the maximum data is 5 and then you are going to swap the maximum data to the last location okay so here 2 will come and then 5 will come okay and then you are going to search the maximum data from this much array okay so every step every step the size of the array is decreasing okay so because initially the size of the array was n then the next step size of the array was n minus 1 in the next time size of the array is n minus 2 in the next step step size of the array is n minus 3 so in that data you are trying to find the maximum data and then you are putting that maximum data to the last location okay so here also if you are searching maximum data from this to this, this position then what is the maximum data maximum is 4 so we are going to swap 4 so 0 will come here and 4 will come here okay and then we are going to search the maximum data into this array only so in this array you are going to find the maximum data and then swap from the last location here okay so in that case what will happen 1 will come here and 2 will come here now if you see the complete array array is 0 1 2 4 5 and 7 which is already which is sorted okay so this is selection sort so what do we do in selection sort we are try we will try to find we will try to search initially the maximum data into the complete array then put the maximum data into the last location then reduce the size so that you can uh, you have to search the maximum data in n minus 1 data so initially if you have searched in n data now you are trying you will try to search the maximum data in n minus 1 data in that case try to find what is the maximum data put to the last location that is n minus 1 at the location and then reduce the size again search in n minus 2 location and put the maximum data into, into the last location okay so how this will work so let us see how to write a program for this so what we are going to do is we are going to apply selection sort so this is the selection sort algorithm and in this selection sort we are taking the array a so it is int a comma int n okay and this n this n is the size of the complete data that means what are the number of data in which you are trying to search the maximum data okay so initially okay so then we have to take uh, some variables assume the variable is int i and j okay so we will see why we are i am taking this variable i in the variable j right and then i am doing for for i is equal to n minus 1 i greater than 0 i minus minus okay see it then you will get what i am doing and then i am doing for j is equal to j is equal to 1 j less than i and then j plus plus okay and here i am taking one more variable so assume it is int max and then i am doing max is equal to a of 0 this so computer is capital a so it is a of 0 
right and then i'll try to search the maximum data here so this inner sorry this inner for loop is going to find what is the maximum data and this outer for loop is going to shift that maximum data to the last location okay so in the inner for loop what we are going to assume is initial data is the maximum data okay so i think uh, i should cover how to search the maximum data into into an array but if you know uh, I'll, i'll make a video separately for that but if you are facing problem on how to uh, find a maximum data in, into a given array then you can watch that watch that video so just try to follow this example here so what i'm doing here okay there may be some modifications which is required into this complete array so we'll see what are those modif modifications okay so here initially i'm going to assume that the first data into a, into that array is the maximum data okay so then i'm going to see if a of j is greater than max okay so i have to remember the location because i have to swap now so i have to remember the location so assume here the max is 0 max is 0 and here i have a of max okay so this is a of max then what i'm going to do i'm going to say max is equal to j okay and then i'm searching from first index location to the ith index location and this ith index location is n minus 1 so i have to include it okay so i have to include this location okay and then and then after this inner for loop after i finish this inner for loop what i have to do i have to swap this maximum data to the last location okay so assume we are having int temp is equal to a of max okay and then i'm doing if is it visible okay it is not visible so uh, let me just write this in in here if it is possible okay so try to see what i'm doing here so it is int temp is equal to a of max and then i'm doing a of max is equal to a of a of a of n minus a of i okay and then a of i is equal to temp okay and then we'll come out of this loop okay let us see what is happening here so if it is not clear let us see what is happening here so assume this is the array array is 0 the data is 0 9 1 6 7 8 and 4 and these are the index locations 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 Okay, these are the next location zero to zero to six. Okay, and now I'm applying this algorithm on this, and let us see what is happening here. So I have two variables initially, so variable i and the variable j. Okay, and this and there's a variable max, so this is max. Okay, and then I'm doing i is equal to n minus one. Okay, so what is the size of this complete array? Total number of elements are seven. Therefore, i is going to store six. Okay, so this is six, and then what I am doing is max is equal to zero. So max is initially storing zero, and then for j is equal to one, so the value of j is one. Okay, see so what what is happening here is initially this inner for loop is trying to find the maximum data. So initially I am going to assume that this initial data is the maximum data, and then I am going to search compare this data to all the other data. So whenever I am going to find the find the maximum data which is greater than this previous data so i'm going to remember that position into the max and then i'm going to move forward until i find the maximum data okay so let us see what is happening here so here j is equal to 1 and j is less than equal to i and then j plus plus okay so if a of j is greater than a of max so what is a of j a of j is 9 and what is a of max a of max is 0 and then i'm do if this is greater than this yes 9 is greater than 0 then i'm going to do max is equal to j so in max i'm going to store 1 see what what happened here 9 was greater than 0 that is why i'm remembering the position of 9 okay and then what is happening here is after this i'm again i'll go to the for loop again and then i'm going to increment the value of j so j will become 2 now so when j is 2 so i'm going to compare 
the value pointed by max that is 9 to the location uh, which is given by j okay so this 1 is less than 9 so condition is failed so again we are going to increment the value of j so the value of j will become 3 now so when the value of j is 3 check what is the value here it is 6 and this 6 is not greater than 9 therefore again this if look at if, if condition is filled so I'll again increment the value of j so the value of j will become 4 so when the value of j is 4 again I'm going to check this condition and then I'm going to compare this this 7 with this 9 because one is uh, max is giving, giving the value 9 so again this condition is failing so uh, again I'll increment the value of j so j will become 5 so when j is 5 what I'm going to do is I'm again checking the uh, checking this condition if condition so 8 is not greater than 9 again I'm going to increment the value of j so when j will become 6 right so when j will become 6 this condition is still true why because the value of i is n minus 1 which is actually 6 okay so 6 is less than equal to 6 yes then again again checking this condition if 4 is greater than 9 no this is not greater therefore uh, this if condition will uh, fail again and then the value of j will become 7 and when the value of j will become 7 this condition will be false so when this condition is false what will happen in that case if this condition is false so we will come out of this inner for loop and then we will try to execute this code so what is this code in this code i am trying to swap the values right so what i am taking is i am taking a temporary variable in this temporary variable i am trying to store the value which is given by a of max so what is the value it is 9 so this temporary variable will store 9 and then as you can see here i have done a of max is equal to a of i okay so that is that is in this position i am going to store the value given by a of i that is i is uh, giving the location 6 so a of max is equal to a of i that means this 4 this 4 will be copied here so 4 will be stored here and then a of i is equal to temp so what is the value of i i is n minus 1 therefore in that location i am going to store this value which is 9 in the next step i am going to decrement the value of i okay because this condition is completed now we have to uh, we'll go back to this for loop out to for loop and then we are going to decrement the value of i so the value of i will become 5 now okay so as you can see in the previous case we have searched the maximum data from 0 to 6 location and now the value of i is 5 so this inner for loop this inner for loop will run from 1 to 5 only that means we are going to search the maximum data from 0 to 5th location okay and the next step this value of i will become 4 therefore we are going to search the maximum data in 0 to 4th right so in every step we are finding the maximum data and then we are putting that maximum data into the last location okay so this is this is the selection sort algorithm so now try to find out what is the time complexity of the selection sort algorithm so what are the cases in, in the time complexity the first case will be the best case the next case will be the, the worst case <coughs> okay so the best case what is the best case assume the data is already sorted so that is the best case here okay so if the data is already sorted in that case also the outer for loop and the inner for loop will run completely okay so outer loop for loop will uh, run and completely and inner for loop will run completely so what is the time complexity in that case time complexity will be order of n square okay so what is the worst case when the data is sorted in decreasing order so as you can see if you try to apply this program in decrease, uh, when the data is already sort, sorted in decreasing order in that case it will take order of n square time okay so in the average course case also it is going to take order of n square time so in some books you can find out the best case is given by omega of n square right because that is a lower bound and the worst case is given by order of n square so the average case is actually theta of n square in case of selection sort algorithm okay so if you are facing problem with this time complexity issues, issues why i am find how i am finding time complexity then go back and check out my time complexity videos okay okay now let us study the insertion sort algorithm okay